Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm gonna model this vintage, maybe original, I guess, Nintendo controller. Uh, I had one of these like in high school in the 80s, so it's gotta be like the original, I guess. Um, it's all mesh operations. I do use a plugin called Poly by Steve Hill. I'll put the Gun Road link below. It's super useful. It's kind of essential, actually. These action transform uh, mesh operations and these make polygon ones uh, are just things you're going to use all the time if you do mesh op modeling. And uh, yeah, so go get that and you'll need that to follow along. So yeah, let's just get started here. Okay, got a fresh new scene here. Just uh, hit enter, we'll call this NES for the NES controller. I'm actually gonna add a backdrop item uh, just for reference. I've got an image I downloaded from the Google. So I just load this up real quick. Da -da -da, there we go. And let me make it smaller because the controller is actually really small and I'll make it actual size. I'll just move this back so it's there if I need it, but not taking up my uh, viewport uh, space and then uh, yeah so let's get started with the cube as we usually do and I actually just googled up the dimensions of this thing so I'm just going to type them in real quick um, and it's 0.1232 2 millimeters by 0 0.017 millimeters and 53 millimeters okay so very small very brick-like ergonomics not a thing in the 80s apparently i don't really remember this hurting my hands honestly i didn't really play this that much I played mario save the princess that's about it i think i was a senior in high school so i had other stuff to do but um then we're gonna do a loop slice and try and get that uh ridge down the middle so you know it's got this sort of like line down the middle let me just change the contrast of this thing a little bit it's kind of ugly looking um not that direction there we go something like that there's a sort of a ridge or like an inset a cut down the middle of it so we're gonna do that um with a loop slice mesh hop so loop slice and loop slice is a little weird you'll see it just does a couple of completely useless slices by default and we want to set this to polygon and then we need to feed it a selection somehow so i'm going to use a select by previous and again, you need Moto at least 16 for this um, because some of these features weren't here prior to 16. For instance, uh, grabbing the cube and having these options from the primitives um, showed up in 16. So we want to do the sides and there we go. We've got one right in the middle, but we actually want two. And this is where loop slice, loop slice gets a little weird. Um, it doesn't really get weird. It just kind of sucks, to be honest. It's almost like they just didn't finish it there's no it should just have in my opinion the little like gradient or whatever with the different edges you just click in and put their position you can change symmetry and all that stuff doesn't have that what it has is i guess the you know maybe it's nice to have this because you could animate it and do it procedurally but i think it's just a pain so if you if you drag a loop slice into the schematic also there's barely any there's no indication of how this even works. So it's not intuitive at all. If you do hit F1 and you get the little question mark and you hit loop slice, um, the documentation is there on, on the on founder's website where it, it takes you. So, you know, that's good. Uh, but you'd never figure this out on your own. So what you need is a, um, a string array. And we're just basically typing in and where we want these um, slices to go so i actually want to count a two and you'll see i've got two in there now let me just up my um wire frame opacity make it kind of thick so you can see it there and if i plug this in and then start typing stuff in it'll override this so what it'll do is is i can keep it at word and then i could just type in my um percentages and hit enter right so i put one at 0.5 and 0.75 what i want is 0.45 and 0.55 so i get this in the middle there i know it's weird but you know it works and so we've got our um also it doesn't that like that array doesn't show up in the tool pipe it's just really weird but put that on the fix list or improve list. Anyway, we've got our little groove there. Now we just need to bevel it in a little bit. So we'll just do 
um, a bit of a, a polygon bevel here. And we're going to be having a lot of polygon bevels um, in this uh, particular <laughs> thing. So again, you know, so procedure modeling is just getting a mesh operation and then telling it what to operate on, right? So it's sort of a two-step process with selection sets and fall-offs and things like that. And the most common selection operations you're going to use are select by previous operation and also select by selection set as we'll create selection sets as we go, as they're, you know, tend to be a little more persistent and a little bit more flexible than select by previous operation, which these usually, uh, select by previous operation will typically work if it's right above the previous one or maybe two above it, but, you know, subsequent mesh ops kind of stomp on those. Uh, tags that are laid down there are the previous operation tags. So often you have to create selection sets to uh, get to those. So anyway, we'll go to our loop slice and we'll get the uh, new polygon. And I think that'll do it. And uh, nope, that will not actually do it. We want um, sliced edge maybe. And then a, a convert from edges to polygons. We'll try that. So we're going from edges to polygons. And now we're going to uh, grab our little tool handle here yep, that's it so again what we're doing is um select by previous we'll, we'll select those sliced edges and then the polygon bevel and I, I say this in all these tutorials i make so if this is the you know probably not the first time you're hearing this if you watch a lot of these but each of these mesh ops expects a certain component type polygon bevel obviously selects polygons sometimes it's not so obvious and there's no hint at all so this something needs to be addressed um, also, I can't tell that these sliced edges are selected. There's no visual feedback. Again, that needs to be addressed. Any selection operations that's selected in the stack should show me what's actually selected. So I'm just taking on faith that these sliced edges are, are selected, and I'm going to convert those sliced edges into the polygons, right? And so that's what this convert does. And again, the convert operates a little bit backwards. You think of converting, you know, we're going to convert it in to something. So we're going to convert our edges to polygons. That's not what's happening here. It's convert from. It converts from whatever the current selection is, which is edges, to um, whatever the mesh operation needs, which is polygons. So we're converting from edges. We don't need to tell it what to convert to. It's converting to what this wants, right? So again, it's a little weird. Um, it's, it's a lot weird, but it works. It just needs some you know, whatever, better documentation maybe. But there's our little in, inset, that's probably too much. And we are off and running with our Nintendo controller. So the next thing I'm gonna do is an edge chamfer. And so I'm gonna just chamfer, I think these edges here, I want a little bit of our edge rounding on that. And so we'll just do an edge chamfer. And edge chamfer, again, is um, a newer version of edge bevel. It's, you should really use it instead of edge bevel when you can. And here I'm just gonna do a two-step operation. First, I'm gonna select um, some edges by length. And so I'm gonna get one of these guys and then I'm gonna do a loop. I'm gonna turn into a loop. So it's gonna be the equivalent of that and that. Now I could just grab all of these and use the index, but I, I wanna avoid select by index if I can to make this fully procedural. I wanna select stuff by a set of rules, not just at the index of these edges, right? So. If you select an edge and you sort of hover over it, and right there, like kind of below my head, is down here on info, you can see how long it is. It's 7.65 millimeters. And so, yeah, I need a, a selection operation, a select by edge length. And you'll find these under selection assemblies. Um, I really wish these were just uh, full on um, selection operations. But what an assembly is, is it uses a selection operation. It uses you know one of these guys down here, one of these selection operators, um, like an edge or polygon or vertex operator, and it uses some nodes and it, it uses you know it does a little, it has a little assembly there telling you you know telling you what it wants to select, and they're really useful and we'll make one sort of later on in this, but you know I really think they should just collapse these into um, selection operations and just put them right here in the main folder because people can sort of forget where these are. Anyway, so we want select edge by length. And so that is somewhere on here. Select edges by length. And what was it like? Seven point something millimeters. We'll just like go 0 0.0065 by 0 0.075, something like that. And maybe 0 0.008. And then we'll do an add selection 
loop. So it'll turn those um, edges into loops. And we want to make sure our edge chamfer is, is operating on edges here. And then just operating channel hall, we have it. But as it is now, uh, we'll just do like a segment of four. By pressing channel hall, you know, that's that's the way we're operating. Okay, so we've got that edge chamfer. And I'm just going to add uh, one more for um, the top and one more, I think, for the bottom. Actually, you know, I think I'll do a little chamfer on these guys here uh, first. And then, then we'll do these big ones up top. Little, little chamfers and bevels often are better done with just edge rounding and the shading aspect of, of you know, your, your asset, but we'll, we'll do them here. So what's cool is I can also just, um, you know, just, just drag this below if I want to do it first. I can just put it underneath the current one, which I'll turn off with these guys. And I'm just going to do a select by previous on this polygon bevel. And that'll get us those edges we want. So select my previous operation. We'll do the polygon bevel and we want the sides. And then we want to then do the boundary edges. So this first one is going to give us um, these, right? Those are the sides. This is the front of that bevel. And then boundary edges will give us, it's kind of like getting the sides and then doing an edge convert like that, and getting the boundaries. So when we do our chamfer here, and I'll just turn on uh, channel hall, and it's just on these guys, right? Just like that. And I'll just do like a little one with a couple of couple little edges there. And then when I turn on this one we already did, it's just gonna you know flow right through there, right? And that's why we do um, try to do selection by uh, these rules and not just select by index. Because if I done select by index, I just grab the corner ones. Um, that would have broken when I added these additional, you know, added these guys here. It would have changed all the indexes, all the indices, right? So that's why we do it. The last one, we, we're just going to bevel these boundaries here. And, and so one more edge chamfer. And you may be wondering why I'm not control D duplicating these and then just changing the selection operations because duplicating mesh operations in Moto is broken. Um, doesn't work right. It'll duplicate the mesh operation, but it'll then maintain the connections to the previous operations, fall offs and selection op ops and sub tools. And it's just broken, it needs to be fixed. I, you know, I believe they are working on fixing that. So with this guy, we wanna select by polygon area. So we just type in area here. And again, this is a selection assembly. It's, they're in a different folder. It's kind of annoying, but that's where they are. And so we'll just select my polygon area. Now area, I'm just gonna do some, it'd be cool if we had, um, a quick info uh, on area. I think we could probably grab it through some item, but I'm just gonna do regular math here. I'm just gonna hover over the edge here, which is this one is about roughly 50 millimeters and this one's roughly 120. So that's uh, 50 times 120 is the area, right? Millimeters. And so minimum area, we'll just do like 0 0.045, mil, you know, 45 millimeters times 0.1, 10 and we'll get the minimum and then maximum would be 0.05 times uh, 0.12 maximum six millimeters so or maybe just a little bit more maybe like 0.07 millimeters for the area and then we're going to convert these polygons because edge chamfer can actually do polys or edges we'll keep it at edge we're just going to convert um, you know, do a convert from. So we're converting from our polygons to our edges. So we'll convert from polygon to whatever this wants. And then I can start dragging here with channel hall on and get my edges. We'll just do maybe three, three kind of little poly. Now you might see like a bit of a shading error here, right? And normal. We can just deal with it later if you want to, but if it bothers you, just go over to your base material, which is where it's getting its shading from, and change area weighting to uh, area. And uh, you can click like area weighting there and it'll go away, right? Looks good. So just another way of calculating normals and that makes it nice and clean. So we can just move on here. Um, you know, in fact, I think I'll just make my material for this now. So we'll set, do a, uh, uh, a material tag on there. We'll just call this um, base gray plastic. I usually like to say what kind of real world my material plastic metal glass is and my material name. 
Um, and then we need to add a group over here in the shader tree. So just add layer group. Be nice if we do this automatically or if we just had a, a button on the mesh hop to do this, but we don't. So add the gray one. I'm just gonna control D duplicate those base materials since we already changed the normal settings in there. And then just hold shift and drag to the left just to make it a little more gray. That'll change the value of the material. Double tap escape to drop everything and we're you know ready to move on here. So next I'm gonna do these little, um, this little notch and circle at the back and I'm gonna use where the cord comes out. I'm gonna use primitive slice for that. So again, primi primitive slice is very finicky as my shop. There's a couple of uh, definite bugs in it where um, it doesn't always apply right when you reload the scene or sometimes the, the, when you use it as a select by previous and try to grab those tagged polys, it doesn't find them. I, I think I sort of narrowed it down what the problem is, but uh, you know, we'll find out. But okay, primitive slice. And I want the axis to be Y. For some reason there's two different axes in here. So set them both to Y. So I think that might be one of the problems. Uh, we have it on rectangle and again, with primitive slice and again this is the ux for it just sucks like first of all like content browser uh, i'm just gonna complain real quick give us something usable not like old profiles from moto 101 and uh also put this like the generator is where most of the action is it should, should be ahead of that i don't know you could actually delete the content preset if you want to anyway we, we want this as a rectangle and you have to have that selected to actually see it on the screen there. So you have to have the primitive generator subtool selected, and then I could go in and just kind of, you know, grab the triangles and, and move it around or whatever to get it where I want it, which is sort of up top here, like so. I'm just eyeballing it. Auto save, so something like this. Is there a, like, uh, Edit from center, that'd be nice. There we go. Yeah, these tool handles would get all kind of crisscrossy and weird. The whole, yeah, this whole primitive slice. It, it can be a really powerful tool, but they need to fix this guy, man, badly. So, okay, this is where we're going. You can kind of see the slice there, which is the default operation. Also, it's worthwhile to turn off lazy apply because um, that may also be one of the problems with uh, uh, this thing not always operating correctly when you reload the scene. Just drag it above a little bit and change um, from slice, go back up here to primitive slice and change it from slice to uh, subtract. Again, like there's too many channels spread off around too many tabs, but I'll just make a whole video complaining about primitive slice later if that's okay with everybody. Okay, so positive depth, maybe just like two millimeters, something like this. And then let's just uh, squish it down just a little bit, like so, maybe. Again, just making a little notch. This is the type of thing that, you know, I see that Blender tends to excel at, these types of little hard service Boolean operations, and Moto very much needs to um, improve its Boolean game. So that's, you know, I'm, again, not measuring. It looks like it's about a fourth of the way over a little more. So what was the, it's about 120 millimeters wide, I think. So the center should be about at negative 60 or so. Does that sound right? Negative 30, I mean. We'll call it negative 25 millimeters, something like that. Okay, looks good. We're just eyeballing it. Good enough. Okay, so there's our little notch. And then... Um, we're going to do this again with uh, the circle that goes underneath it where the cord comes out. So we'll do another primitive slice. And this one, again, remember, you've got to grab the um, primitive generator and we're going to set our axes. This time we're going to go Z. Make sure you set it on both tabs, the slice effector and uh, also the, the primitive generator, which is a little, again, I'm not sure why, why there's two different axes on here, but sure there's a reason. Go to circle. Now, radius should definitely be default Omni Hall, but it's not. Um, we'll just set this to like two millimeters and start to move this over. Again, it defaults to slice. What did I put um, the center for this guy on again? 
25. So I'm just going to control C, copy that, come over here and control C, paste that. We'll just sort of get that set up. And then again, we're going to do um, slice. This needs to be maybe a little bit bigger, maybe not that big. Maybe three. Yeah, that looks about right. And we want it at uh, Y at zero. So it's right in the center of that cut, right? Like that. And we'll turn it to select the permanent slice, the top sort of uh, mop, and we'll change this from slice to uh, subtract. And now we just got to work on our depths here a little bit. So negative depth we'll do um, 0.01 like that. Positive depth you can just leave or smoosh that down. Again, it'd be nice to have tool handles for depth. Um, lots of improvements needed still on this tool. I think five is fine. So something like this, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit bigger. So go back to my um, circle radius and try four. That looks pretty good. I can up the sides too. Generally 48 or 64 is, are good places to go with um, sides, but because this is procedural, you know, the whole, whole thing is mops, we can always change that later. So yeah, okay. Looking pretty good there. Turn off lazy apply again, um, just to make sure. Yeah, everything's working here. Okay, double tap escape to drop it. And we're gonna do a little bit of um, beveling on this guy. So we'll just do a polygon bevel. And we're gonna do a select by previous operation. And that second slice there will give us um, access to polygons from driver surface, I believe is what we want. Also make sure you have ghosting on so you can, again, this is another issue. If ghosting isn't on, you're not gonna see these selections here. So some selections, they just never show up with a selection operator. No selection operations are gonna be visible if you don't have ghosting on. I, and like, I didn't have that on previously and maybe missed a couple here earlier, but you can see it's getting um, this and also all these edges here. So we just wanna contract our selection by one. So we'll just add a grow shrink and do minus one. Whoops, not minus 13, minus one. And there it is, right? So now we can go back to hit this guy, just channel haul this in, something like that. And then we'll do one more on here to sync this middle one in a little bit. Again, it'd be nice to control deduplicate that guy and just change the channel on the, the select by previous, but um, because duplicate doesn't work, we have to add a, another uh, polygon bevel. Like so, and then select by previous operation. And again, this has gotta be a faster way to sort of um, do this, I feel, so. Let's see, polygon bevel two. So my previous polygon, yeah, bevel two. So here we've bumped into this problem where you see we've lost um, this bevel right here because the select by previous operation somehow lost this primitive slice. So I'm not sure what's causing that bug. And here you see it doesn't see either primitive slice in the select by previous. Um, yeah, sometimes flipping them on and off tends to work. Here, it, it sees it here, but not up here. So, you know, it's an issue that needs to be fixed. And I'm not sure, preview geometry maybe, maybe turn that off. Maybe that's causing some issues. We'll see. So we got them on, we turned this guy back on. Select by previous, still not seeing it. Let me delete that, try it again. Select by previous operation, drag it under grow. And now they're showing back up. So yeah, I don't know. I wish I could say, whoops, go shrink back on. I wish I knew what was going on there. Maybe it's the preview geometry. Something is, is making those inaccessible, but um, got it working again. And yeah, we'll just uh, push that back a little bit. 
like so. I suppose we could do a bit of an edge chamfer on here, just on these two edges here. These edges are a little gnarly, this outside one to do um, an edge chamfer on. You're likely to get some polygon errors, but I feel fine just you know doing them here. Here and here and here probably is where we want it. So we really want these, which is um, the 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 this bevel right here, right? So the edges bevel of this one. So we'll just do an edge chamfer. And we'll do it on Yeah, see we're losing it again. And we'll do select by previous operation. And I believe I want polygon bevel two. And I want the uh, sides of that. So just, you can see them right there, right? And edge chamfer, let's um, set that to, actually, I wonder, I, I guess you could probably keep it a polygon. Like I said, edge chamfer will work with polygon and edge. No, that's not what we want. We definitely want um, edge. And so, Let's, let's change edge chamfer to edge, and then our polygon selection, we just want the boundary of those polygons, so now we have those edges there, and that's what we want, something like this. All right, looking good. Okay, so we've got our basic shape, we've got the back part, and so the rest of this um, is really just a series of using solid drill or Boolean, um, and some of these functions, and using creating specific cutter shapes for these, right? So you could use um, primitive slice for some of those stuff, like um, your circles here. But again, primitive slice is really flaky, as you've seen. Plus, it's not flexible enough. We need an edge radius on the prim primitive slice uh, uh, rectangles so we can get these nice little bevels here, right? And we don't have that. And we need to be able to, um, there, there's a lot of things we need a primitive slice. It'd be nice to just be able to draw a shape, some things like that. But it's okay, we can just use uh, additional items in the scene to create our, our cutter shapes, and it'll work just fine. And those items will also be procedural, so we can always change those as well. So the best thing to start with, I think, is just this gray, dark gray inset, this rectangle with the sort of little bull nose on the edges. Again, It'd be nice if we could use primitive slice, but um, primitive slice doesn't have a rounding feature for the rectangle. Uh, I've requested it, and I, I believe they said it can be coming, but it definitely needs a radius for the rectangle. So let's do, uh, just press in for a new op, uh, item, and we're gonna call this, um, we'll just call it slicer first, so we know that it's being used for Booleans, and we'll call it uh, middle section, like that. And then I'm just gonna keep this procedural as well. You can you can you know just use direct modeling tools for these if you want, but I'm just gonna try to make this whole thing procedural. So if we want to you know change the segments on those little rounding edges or something or the or, you know the dimensions later, it's easy to do. So we'll just start with a cube, and y uh, dimension will be like 0 0.005, and x and z would be like 0.08. I'm just sort of guessing here 0.04. We just sort of move it up. So something like this, a little bit bigger. So I usually pop open my mini props with a spacebar, hit resize from center, and sort of pull these out. And just hit spacebar again to dismiss that. Again, is this right in the middle? It's not quite in the middle. It's a little pushed forward a little bit, right? So these three edges are about the same sort of inset, but the back one is not. So let's go back here, shift A, just to sort of zoom in. And then I'll resize, not from the center, to pull this one down. Got it from the top. And again, I'm just eyeballing this, but these should be approximately the same, or well, the back should be a little bit bigger. Something like this, maybe, maybe like that. I don't know, like I said, doing this procedurally so we can always change it. Now, what I want to do actually with the cube is, is I don't want, um, it's actually easier if I just put depth to zero. So it's just a plane and then do a vertex bevel like this. And then just press C for channel hall and just drag. You can control one, toggle on your verts if you want. Right click as usual to drag and get your you know verts there. So it's, it's a bit of a tight bull nose, something like this. 
And again, I think it's just easier to add that rounding first and then do like a, a thicken operation and just um, push it down, right? So we're intersecting. In fact, you don't even really need to intersect. You could do um, an axis drill uh, or we could do a solid drill. And so the difference is an axis drill, um, it doesn't have to be a, a overlapping volumes like we have here. Uh, it'll just project down from an axis, but we'll just do um, a solid drill, which is which is fine. I don't think the computation is really any worse or whatever. So, so we've got that. So let's go back to our NES, and then we'll just add a solid drill. And I'm gonna pick my I get a little requester here, and I pick my um, my slicer middle section. Okay, and the operation I want is stencil. And what stencil is pretty cool. Basically, it'll just apply a material. Um, and to that boolean operation. So I hit stencil, okay, and I can actually hide my middle section here. And what, what just does default um, uh, by default for the for the uh, material, but we'll just call it dark gray plastic. And since we don't have that in our shader tree yet, we need to add it. So add layer, we need a group, and we need to pick um, dark gray plastic, um, the tag we just created. And then we'll throw in a, actually we'll just uh, duplicate this uh, material that's already in there, and drag it in, or we can add a new one, whatever. And again, just drag down for that dark gray. There we go, good enough for now. And then that's actually just, if you look at the, the guy here, it's actually, it's hard to tell from this angle, but it's actually inset just a little bit, like a half a millimeter or something, so. I'll just um, do a quick uh, polygon bevel on here. We need polygon bevel on a hotkey or something. <laughs> it's like the most used guy for these, um, used mesh operation for these hard service things. So yeah, we'll just do, yeah, we could do a select by polygon tag. Or we could do previous operation. We'll just do polygon tag. We're gonna select, you know, keep it at material and we'll just do that dark gray material just created. It'll just operate on that P tag and I'm just going to Moving it down a little bit. Again, pressing C for channel hall. Channel hall is just so nice because I can zoom in to where I, I want to look and not have to deal with tool handles. So I just want it down, yeah, like a third of a millimeter or something. It's, it's not much, right? But there we go, looks good, okay. So moving along. So the next thing we want is we want to uh, slice in, I can actually move this a little bit closer, I think. Don't you think? Um, we want to get these guys here, right? The sort of greenish gray uh, markings. One, two, three, four, five. I'm guessing there's five or six of them there. So again, we'll just do a new uh, item here by pressing in. We'll call this slicer um, gray, uh, sort of green gray rectangles. And then, yeah, it's sort of the same thing. So we'll just do a cube and uh, we just do, you know, mini props is fine. Put our size to 0 0.020, 0 0.02, something like that. We'll go in there and do it manually. Move it up, something along these lines. I think the top looks like it kind of came right to this notch here, like so. And then it looked like it was sort of, let's see what we got here. It's actually, again, it's not centered, you know, so I, I'm just sort of eyeballing this, but you know, a little, little to the left and sort of cut off at the top, right? Not quite in the middle of the top though. So a little bit like this. Again, this is gonna be, it's all procedural so we can Fix it all later. There's definitely more space over here than over here. So let's try something like this. Again, we'll just do the um, vertex bevel here and do our channel hall, control one, swipe to turn on those uh, uh, verts, and then just you know left click for radius and right click for number of segments. And there you go. Again, it's pretty, yeah, it's a decent bullnose there. It's not, not nearly as much as I have, so probably something like this, maybe one less segment. Okay, there we go. And now we need to clone it. So we're gonna do a clone. 
And again, you need to you select the linear generator here. I think it might actually give you a tool tip. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> there it is. We had just uh, zero on Y, and we actually want it on uh, Z. I just select between, we'll say we want, I think six of these and just drag it down. I think actually five of these maybe, like so. And again, looking at this, we've got one, two, three, four is covered up, five. We see um, most of this one and a little less of this one. So it's a little, a little offset a little bit. So looking at the top. Let's see, what was that again? Yeah, a little less of this one, a little more of that one. So something like this, although I think my cube needs to come down a little bit. Something along these lines. Okay, turn off that. Okay, looks good. And then, yeah, let's just do a little thicken on here and push it down so it's intersecting, okay? And then now we just want it to affect um, this inset area, right? This sort of black area. It's really darker than that. So let me just darken that a little more. Um, it doesn't affect... You know, it, it's not, I'm just looking at this thing, it's a 3D object. I don't think it's on the edges so much. So let's take a look here. Um, let me get this on here. So let's do uh, a couple selection operations. We'll select this guy and we're gonna do um, a solid drill again. So solid drill. And we want the slicer green gray rectangle and we want the stencil again. So we can hide our green gray rectangle. You can see the stencil there, but let's, limit this to just this big polygon there. And we'll do that with the selection operation. So select my previous operation. We're just gonna use this polygon bevel uh, right here. And we just want it on the, the, the front, right? And so we'll go back up here. Now it's just limited. It's like a mask, right? It's just on this front polygon like that. And then the actual um, stencil, we'll call this uh, green, gray, plastic, like that. And we'll just um, add a new group here, select that P tag that was just created and um, add a material in there and just go down. It's a little bit, if I'm not mistaken, just a little bit uh, greener. I'm just gonna drag up on the green one. So something like this, we can you know, deal with these later, but that seems about right. One, two, three, four, and there's little gaps in between. One, two, three, four. Actually, I gotta do one less on my clone here. Go back here. So this is one of the reasons we make it um, procedural so we can go in and do this. Looks about right. And I think our cube just needs to be a little bit thicker. Yeah, something like that, okay. Okay, and we're actually going to delete um, this one. So we're going back to our green gray slicer and we're going to add a delete mesh op here. Under, put it underneath thicken, just drag it under thicken and we'll do a select by and turn the delete to polygon. And we'll do a select by previous operation here and grab our clone. And again, you need Moto 16 to do this with these like clone um, select by previous Ops were put in here, which is great. I just select that one and now it's gone. And now I've got, you know, the three and the one at the bottom. So looking good, okay. That's why we do it procedurally. All right, so not that you couldn't do that in direct either, but yeah, it's nice, okay. Uh, so yeah, moving on, we've got some buttons. And so we could stencil on the text and, and I just used a, like a Nintendo Illustrator file I found online for the logo. Um, and we can use text uh, text mesh op to keep the text procedural. I don't have this font probably, uh, but I'll just use Arial or something that everybody has. But let's take a look. You know, we could do the buttons first, um, or we could do this middle section here first. I want to do this middle section here first. It's got a bit of a beveled edge, and so there's there's a there's some stuff going on with that. So let's do this middle section, 
and then we'll do this stuff over here. But all these buttons are kind of made the same way. And if you watch the Atari joystick one, um, you have an idea of where this is gonna go. So again, I'm gonna start with a new um, mash off. We'll just call this uh, slicer white um, bevels or start stop slicer start stop section. Is it start stop? Is it start stop or is it start select start? Start stop. Don't know my Nintendo. Gotta say, I was always uh, a computer gamer. And at this era, I had an Atari 1040 ST, maybe an Amiga 500. Those are the games I played. Not so much Nintendo. I just thought it was sort of for the kids. Anyway, um, yeah, so we'll do a cube here. And I'll make it small like I've been doing. So maybe 0 0.02, 0, whoops, not segments, section. 0 0.02, 0 0.02, move it up. I'm sort of moving it into position here. So this little line you see is an uh, ambient occlusion artifact that we should probably get fixed. Uh, foundry also would be nice to keep my blue um, boundary there. So I'm just gonna grab the slicer green. I'm just gonna control C uh, where these the center of the screen one is. So I can go over here to this guy and my cube and just control V. So they're both in the center. Now I could actually link these procedurally in, um, uh, in the schematic. So if I moved one, I moved the other. In fact, why don't I show you how to do that real quick. So if I go over to the schematic and let me just drop this cube. Let me just uh, actually, I'll take the cube and I'm just gonna drag in position X here. And then I'll take this other slicer, these green guys, and I'll take its cube and I'll drag in position X. And I can just drag one to the other. So if I wanted to move over these green guys, like I had them, you know, half a millimeter too far that way, I could just go in here. And when I move one, it'll move them both, see? So again, you can do some cool procedural modeling, stuff like that. I'll just unhook it for now. Um, you know, there, there's, there's, there's lots of reasons to use mesh operations, you know, and, and you know, that's one of them. You know, you can really link up all your channels between different mesh ops and different items. You can create rigging controls and stuff like that uh, if you really want a, a, a procedural sort of Houdini type asset. So it's, it's pretty cool um, what you could do with this where you wouldn't, you know, be doing that with, with direct modeling. So I think this is just kind of in here like so. I don't know if it's the exact same width as these, is it? It's a little bit chunkier. Interesting. So the gaps between them are the same, but this is pretty big. I almost wonder if, uh, let me try a little, hmm. Let me try a little something here. I do think my gaps are too big and my polygons are too big for uh, my green slicer guy here. So let me just try to, whoops, fix this really quick. So I want a little bit thinner. Oh, I think I did have the right number of clones initially. Um, I just had my thing too big. So my clone, remember you gotta select the linear generator and let's call this five and, and squish them. down just a little bit and then let me just um, hide this guy I need to delete two of these not just one of these so my delete um, add another select my previous operation select that set that to add I'm gonna grab uh, my clone I'm gonna grab three right so I want oh that's three so four and three and four that's what I want number four clone and three clone added on and I want those deleted Banished to Valhalla. Okay, so now that's that's looking a little bit better. I got more room for my uh, for my select and start buttons. All right, looks good. So just it's roughly the same gap. Again, I'm just eyeballing this thing, but looks about right. Looks about right. Yeah. So it's, the edges, I guess, are just a little bit resized from center, and then just squish it in a little bit like that, and. Yeah, we'll do a bevel and then we're gonna do um, do another stencil operation. So vertex bevel, 
Good spelling. If you're a good speller, that usually helps when searching for mesh operations. Something like this. I should really make sure all my one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, all my round levels should probably be the same if I'm being a clean modeler. And then I'll uh, thicken it um, just down a little bit. And we'll do grab our guy here. We can hide this and do another uh, solid drill. So again, if you if you have Moto 16, you can just hover over this uh, pane here and hit tab like you would in Houdini or Nuke or any other node-based program to pop up your tab here. And yeah, this, uh, whoops, when I do it, yeah, this solid drill is gonna do It's gonna use um, the start, select like start guy. And we don't want core, we want stencil, and we want white plastic like that. And then I'll just go ahead and, and just update my shader tree as I'm going along here. So group, material, white plastic, add my material. Again, it'd be nice just to have a button maybe on these mesh ops where I could just hit click a button and add the group and the material to the shader tree. If it already exists, just don't do it. Yeah, I don't know. seems like a reasonable feature request, don't you think? Okay, so bump that up. Looks good. And then, yeah, we'll do a couple of bevels on here. This has sort of a, you know, a bit of a beveled edge. So we're going to go up and we're going to go in and we're going to go back down. Then we'll probably chamfer the two edges a little bit. So let's just do that. So this is going to be a lot of bevel operations in a row. So polygon bevel. And we're going to use that solid drill. So I can actually just um, select by previous operation to use the solid drill tags that are put on there or just the polygon tag, material, and white plastic. And since this is the only white plastic in the, on the model at, the, at this point in the stack, then I'll just, it'll just use that. And this is just going to go up a little bit like so. And then we're going to do another polygon. Again, this is where um, I should just be able to control D these and then change the parameters of the selection operations. But, you know, until they get that fixed, you just got to keep adding them manually and, and doing this, right? So I'll go front. I'm just going to channel hold this in a bit. And then we're going to go down one more and what do we do we add our select by previous and we select the last bevel and we select the front and then we come over here and just um whoops push it down a little bit is that not polygon bevel this one in the front yep okay and then we uh yeah so push it down and get it to come in just a little something like this now that this crossing polygon behavior you see I believe we can turn it off with an auto weld it should it even this just sort of like annoying like it'll weld those guys but it keeps going which I guess it should we'll, we'll keep it like this this is fine um, Okay, so you can just double tap escape to clear out of that. And again, you get a little bit of a shading error there, which you can always, like I said, you could just go in and adjust the area shading. That should work. So let's go here, area weighting to area angle. Um, oh, angle weighting. I don't think we need to select that, just area. That should do it. And I think I must have selected angle weighting down here, which I don't, yeah, don't necessarily need. Let's turn this off real quick. Yeah, still looks good. Okay, we're cool. We're cool. Everything's cool. Let's do a um, just like a chamfer to get you know a little bit of a. Uh, again, you could use viewport like a rent like a, a rounded edge shader here with these little tiny chamfers. But I don't know. You can always just you know turn these things off if you want to in the stack. But we'll do a select by previous operation. I don't want seven. I want polygon six, I believe, and I want. Um, the sides, I think. Yeah, there we go. And then I want edge chamfer to be set to edge. And so I've got these, but I just want the boundary like that. Now I've got just the boundary edges. And with uh, edge um, Omni Hall selected, again, Omni Hall lets you 
push into what you want to look at and not have to deal with these, you know, the tool handle being far away, right? So with, with this on, you could just go where you want and we'll do a couple bevels there, a couple segments and yeah, looking good. So I think we got that part done. And we just got to slice into this again to get our two, uh, two buttons. So again, the rest of this video is really just like this procedure over and over, right? So you can probably, I'll just, I'll finish it up, but you could probably just do it yourself. Um, just, you know, we're going to be creating more of these items over here to create these different uh, uh, cuts we're going to be using. And we'll use, I guess we'll use a couple. This this one requires some extra work. So anyway, just, I guess, follow along, follow along if you want to. Let's get these um, slices in here, though. So let's do another um, a slicer item. We'll call this... Uh, Again, you wouldn't have to make all these items if Primitive Slice worked better and if we had an angle radius on the cube uh, or the square, right? So, Taz, if you're listening, <laughs> great to have that feature. Um, so this is uh, start and select buttons. Get home here, this is a slicer. And then, so, yep, cube. And make it as kind of small, like 0 0.05, 0 0.02, maybe, like so. Sort of push it up here and look at the top. And again, we can, you know, you can link all this stuff. Like I showed earlier, I could just sort of, sort of um, grab this guy and, and see where the cube is in terms of Z and Control C, copy that and then go to the cube we're making and um, paste it. Now I just know it's in the center, right? So move these out a little bit. Something like this, kind of long and skinny, Maybe a little bit longer and skinnier than that. And then uh, we'll just do a clone. Now, if this is in the center, we could do a mirror, but it's not really in the center, is it? Like this, it's just all off to the left a little bit. So I don't think a, a mirror, actually a mirror with uh, a cutting plane would be great, but I don't think mirror has a cutting plane. Um, does it? Let's try. Do mirror and does mirror have a subtool? Mirror generator, oh, it does. Du, du, du. Okay, well, that's cool. Something like this. Yeah, man. Could have used a clone, but mirror will work. That's cool. We'll do a mirror. Something like this. Is there much of a gap between the two? There actually is kind of a big gap. So this sort of tweaking around. Okay, looks fine. Something like that and then we need to do our um, uh, polygon or uh, vertex bevel. These are pretty rounded. And then I will thicken them like so. And then, uh, yeah, let's go back to this guy. I can actually hide those. I'm gonna use them again. I'll just do a solid drill. And the reason I'm doing solid drills is instead of like a Boolean, I just think it gives a little more control. We can, we can do the drill and apply the material. And then we can, you know, we can then start doing like polygon insets and things like that um, to really adjust the hole besides just doing a, a straight up Boolean, which sometimes, um, there's a little less flexibility, I think, but you could you could probably just build in these holes. That being said, but we'll do a, we'll do a solid drill since we have to change the material anyway. I feel like we're just killing two birds with one stone here. So we'll go to uh, stencil and we want um, the, the two buttons there. And our stencil would be uh, start stop rubber buttons and we'll add that to the shader tree group and material and. Our group will select that start stop rubber buttons. And this is just sort of a darker, rougher material. Whoops, not specular color. I want uh, diffuse color here. 
Just hold shift and drag. Again, shift um, left, right is value. Control is, let me just get some color in here. Control is hue and alt is saturation, right? So these are, this is since early moto. I just think it's a genius, like um, how they did this. It's so easy to just to get to the color you want without having to screw up the color picker. And, and again, dragging is the best input method. So, okay, there we go. We got these. And I'm just going to then bevel those guys down. And we'll just do a select by um, the material. So polygon tag material, we'll get that rubber button there. And we're just gonna uh, push these down a little bit. Now here's where I, I tend to do, now I, I could have just gone up, you know, I could just do this and, and there's our button. But you know, there's there's a we're being technical here. There's a gap, right? There's a gap around it. So let's do this the right way, and um, let's make up, let's make a hole. So there's a gap. Actually, you know, this the edges wouldn't be rubber though, would they? So let's change this. Let's go to solid drill, and instead of stencil, let's go slice because it should it should keep that. Um, white plastic and then our select uh, by material let's turn that off and let's add a select by previous operation solid drill and um, our polygons actually the intersecting edges we want and then convert those edges from edges to polygon there we go so the select by previous is on solid drill it doesn't allow us it depends it's just creating edges we can select the old polygon geometry which is everything we don't want or we select the intersecting edges, which are these guys, and then we just convert those from edge to polygon, which this wants, and we bevel down, right? So there we go. And what I've been doing with these, if you looked at the Atari joystick video, is I tend to take these and I, I clone them up a little bit, and then I use Action Transform, which is in the poly kit in the link below, and I shrink them down, and then I bevel them back up for, you know, to create the button. So that's just what I'm gonna do really quick. Um, so and again, we're not using select by index, so we'll just we'll just do this the uh, procedural ways. So we're gonna do a clone, and we're gonna select by previous, which is that polygon bevel we just laid down there. Select by previous operation, polygon bevel, and then we do the front, and so you can see it right there. So we're gonna clone those up, um, just like a one millimeter, not one meter. So point oh oh one, you'll see it right there. Just popped into existence there. And then I'm going to do an action transform. Actually, I can do a assign selection set here. And I'm going to do a polygon selection set and I'm gonna grab from that clone operation. So like my previous operation, that latest clone, which is clone two, I guess. And I'm gonna select the cloned polygons and I'm gonna assign a selection set called um, rubber buttons and I always go to my stats just to make sure it's there. So polygon selection set rubber buttons right there. And I'm assigning a selection set just because I'm going to use it later um, to assign materials and stuff like that. So I guess I could have assigned a material tag to it. We'll do a selection set and then we'll do a polygon bevel on top of that and we'll just use that selection set to um, select those polygons for the bevel. So select by selection set and then we'll just do it uh, should be a drop it seems like there should be a what do they call these rubber buttons you gotta type it in or with the material tag you just select from a list seems like i should just select from a list you get this all over moto like you can either type in the weight map name on some mesh operations or you get a list on others you know like make up your mind <laughs> i feel like these were developed by different developers and um you know, there, there wasn't any rules when they made them. I actually don't want polygon bevel. I want to turn that off for now. I want to do an action transform. This is the one in the poly kit. And then I'm just going to use a select by selection set here, just like on that polygon one. And we'll call this, um, uh, yeah, rubber buttons. And you can see it's selected there. An action transform does like a local uh, transform kind of like using a local action center so if I do scale on this and do like 95 and 98 let's say you can see it sort of shrinking down in there that polygon right you see the edges helps to have ambient occlusion on and this type of thing so again sometimes I like to just um, clear the uh, 
all hauling assignments and then just go up and down here. So if I go left and right, it's it's Z and up and down it's it's X. So something like something like that to just sort of action transform it in. And then we just keep our polygon bevel here. It's just using that selection set to um, grab those guys and then I just push it up. So there's our two buttons. We just need to bevel that or chamfer that top one, right? So we'll do a chamfer and we'll select using that latest bevel. Previous operation, last guy, front, we got those. And then we'll just do a boundary. So we're using the edges, edge chamfer, we want it set to edge and turn on channel hall, just kind of, they're really rounded, so. Something like this, auto weld, try auto weld here. Sort of works. <laughs> turn it off, okay, that's fine. I think it's a little bit too tall, so I'm gonna you know, let me turn off ghosting really quick so I can just see what I'm doing here. So I'm turned off ghosting. So, you know, if I have ghosting on, it ghosts everything above. So it's ghosting the chamfer, which you can't see. I want to see what it looks like with the chamfer. So I turn off ghosting, but I have polygon bevel selected and channel hall on. So I could just adjust that polygon bevel to get that, those buttons there. It's not totally what they look like. Oh, I guess there's kind of flat at the top. Okay, so it's not that big of a, a chamfer, I guess. Maybe like that. Okay, good. And then um, I'll just use that selection set to apply that rubber material, right? So that we had created, already created over there. So, so uh, material tag and select by selection set. And we'll just do rubber buttons and the material tag will be, um, what do we call it? Start, stop rubber buttons. Now, again, this already exists in the tree, so I'm just pointing it to a tag that exists in the tree. And that's sort of the weird thing with, you know, moto shading, and, and it's a good thing. But, you know, we're just referencing anything that's in a tree, right? They're just creating tags, and then if, if there's a tag in a the tree, then it'll, it'll, you know, shade it, right? So here, a tag in a tree already exists, fine. Hit enter, it'll pick it up. Um, if it doesn't exist, then we just go to the tree and make a group with that tag and, and, and put a material in it. So, you know, it's really flexible. I think my, my gray, base gray is a little dark. Again, just hold shift and move it up a little bit. Something like that. Okay, I'm getting there. Rubber buttons probably need to be a little bit darker. Like that, all right. Looks okay. So we'll put our text in there later. It was too small. I think they're just a little small. So again, it's all procedural. So I'm gonna go back to my um, original cube here. We'll just turn on ghosting, get my tool handles, and I wanna resize. No, I, just, I don't need to resize from center. I'll just resize. No, I'll resize from center on the, uh, on the Z. That looks better, I think. Okay. Something like that. All right. Lovely. Got it. Procedural. All right. Um, what's next? We've got uh, the AB buttons over here, and then we'll work on this guy. So AB buttons. Um, you know the you know the routine now, right? So we're going to create a new one here. Slicer AB base, and this is going to be the, um, the square base there. So we're going to slice with that. That uses, I guess, this sort of base material here, the same color, I guess. So uh, we'll just do a cube, and it's pretty little. 0.01, whoops, not, not segments. 0.01, 0.01, 0.01. Move it into position with the tool handles. Looking here, it's it's a little bit, I guess it's centered on this, 
but a little bit bigger. So again, you can hook up all this stuff, um, all these, you know, uh, cube positions in the schematic like we you know, kind of did earlier here, uh, or I can just, you know, copy and paste them in. So I'm, you know, grab um, this guy and I look at the, the cube center on this guy on Z is, is that about 10 millimeters. I'll copy that. And I'll come down here and I'll just uh, paste that in. So then I'll do a resize from center. And yeah, so it's a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, not a ton bigger than those. Something like this. So maybe 0.014 by 0.014. Something like that. And then I could use clone or mirror, like we've sort of said before. Actually, I don't need the, the Y, just the um, X and Z. And so let's do a vertex, uh, vertex bevel and get these guys just a little, I think. And then do a mirror and we'll grab our um, mirror generator in the tool pipe here. If you have channel hall on, there's no channel hall set up here, but you won't be able to see, see no channel selected, you won't be able to see the, the handles. So channel hall is either, you either get handles or channel hall, not both. So it'd be nice to have both, but um, if, you, if you're wondering where the tool handles are, make sure you don't see this no channel selected up here. And you'll get your tool handles back. So something like that, there's actually quite a bit of empty space over there. So I think the cube needs to move over a little. My mirror generator needs to come over a little. Something like, yeah, not too much space in between. Okay, it's not science, but something like that. Looks good. Again, we could always fix it later. Um, we'll do a thicken and just uh, move it down. Whoops. See, that's why I don't like tool handles. Like I just tried to grab this and I missed. And now I've got to come up here and do it again. I got to like grab that stupid, like, um, so you know, I grab that object. I got to grab that handle. I just think like, um, it's just so much better to use Omni Hall for this stuff. So, okay, so that's in there. We'll hide it, go back here. We're gonna do a solid drill again. And we're gonna pick our, um, the buttons there, slicer A, B, base. Then we're gonna do, uh, yeah, I think we'll do stencil here. We're just gonna do that um, gray base, what do we call it? Base plastic? Base gray plastic, right? So base gray plastic, and it'll pick up that, you know, material in the shader tree. So if I change this, you'll see it changes everything, right? So we got the, that, that on there now, base gray plastic. And then we'll just, uh, Actually, no, we don't want that. We want, uh, again, we need to make the, um, actually, there's not really a gap there. There's a gap between the the red, but there's no gap there. So, okay, so we're good. So I think we're good. So we'll just do this, and then we'll do a, uh, a bevel, polygon um, bevel. And here, I don't want to do a select by material because it's going to select all the base gray plastic. I just want to select by the previous operation, which is solid drill. So we'll do a select by previous operation. And we're going to select the that last solid drill. And if you remember, uh, stencil polygons is what we want. And so you see them highlighted in green there. And then we could just um, turn on channel hall and, and push them up a little bit. Just a little bit, not a ton. There we go. Now, again, this is it, what's interesting is um, let's do this uh, just for an experiment. So I'm going to grab my AV button slicer here. I'm going to drag the entire thing to the schematic. I'm going to click everything. And so I'm, then I'm going to sort of um, arrange it. And so it's again, this is a little weird to look in here. We've got a cube. And then we've got a vertex bevel, and then we've got a mirror, and we've got thicken, and then it's used as an input into that solid drill, right? So we don't want that, but we do want to uh, duplicate all these. And so if I control D duplicate over here, 
Well, I did actually duplicate that connection, but I can just unhook it. And I've got completely new guys here, except actually this tool pipe is gonna be the same. It's gonna share that mirror generator. So let me just undo everything. So this is where the duplication in Moto is, is, is goofy. So let me just, if you see a yellow guy, just yellow diamond, just uh, select it. So I'm gonna duplicate everything that's selected. It seems to duplicate the connection. It won't duplicate this mob, it'll duplicate the connection there, which I'm then gonna disconnect. Okay, so this will all become apparent why I'm doing this in a second. Um, and our select AB base, we'll just, instead of base two, we'll rename it to base buttons. And then what do we want? We don't want a cube, right? We want a cylinder. We want it to be in the same, um, transform position is the cube. So here, and I'm just copying and pasting these here, like that, maybe 0.02. You can see it right there. And then the cube, I'm just gonna right click and, and delete it. I've got our cylinder and it's really big. So I just want like 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So you kind of see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm getting these other guys sort of for free. This is the thing where a, the duplicate um, command just needs to be fixed. I should have just been able to duplicate this original guy here and it would have you know, duplicated everything for me without maintaining those connections to like these sub tools like this. Um, but because it is broken in that way, um, there's our cylinder. Um, we can't do that. So this really needs to be fixed, it really needs to be fixed. And I'm, I'm gonna hopefully see this fixed so we don't have to operate in such a convoluted way. But so we got our, um, our buttons here, we've got our cylinder. So I'm just gonna, for radius, I'm just gonna uh, swipe up on the Y. And so X and Z are just left mouse button and drag. So something like this, right? And then uh, Y is on up, down, okay. And now we don't need vertex bevel on here. I can just, just turn that off where you can come in here in the schematic since we have it here. I'll just unhook it and delete it, do whatever you want. Um, I got my cylinder here and then I'm just gonna move it down like this. Looks, looks pretty good, right? And I'm gonna do uh, use this for a, a slice operation on here. So mirror and then thicken. That is weird. That's a weird. Oh, I don't want thicken. Yeah, I don't need a thicken. That's why. That's why that looked kind of weird. I just wanted the mirror. Probably would have been faster just not duplicating it, right? Okay. So anyway, that's what we got. Um, and then we'll go back to our base here, and we're going to let me just turn these two guys off. And here I am going to just do a slice because I have to have that sort of gap. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, uh, solid drill slice. We'll do slice and we'll pick that. Um, what do we call that? Slice every base buttons. Okay, so there we now we've got it. And then I will be bevel those down. And so select by previous operation. And we want to do that latest solid drill. Because it's a slice, I'm only getting the intersecting edges, which I then have to do a convert from edges to polygons. And now I can do my um, my bevel down. Okay, so now I've got an edge. And then we'll just do that whole clone action transform thing we did to bring those polygons up, shrink them down, bevel them up into those red buttons, right? So we'll start with a uh, clone operation. So we'll just do a clone. And we're going to clone the front of the uh, those two polygon of that polygon bevel. It's like my previous operation. That latest polygon bevel. We'll do front, and we want to make sure clone is actually set to polygon. We'll clone vertices or polygons. We want polygons. You'll see it'll be just one meter up here, right? That's that's the default. So let's just turn that back down to one millimeter, and you'll see it's just sitting right above there. Now again, I'm going to do a selection set. So I'm assign a selection set, make sure it's a polygon selection set, call this red buttons, that's the selection set name. 
and make sure you do your select by previous operation to just get those guys from the clones with just the latest clone, clone polygons right there. So those now have a selection set. We can just operate on those. It's, it's, um, we'll do that a, we could do a thicken, we'll do a thicken. We'll do a, a thicken operation and we'll um, select by that selection set we just created, which was red buttons. And we'll just thicken that up. Maybe, yep, there we go. Oh, I forgot to do the action transform to get that gap. That's the whole point of doing this. So let's go up like this and then no worries. We'll do an action transform and we're gonna put it under the thick end and we're going to do a select uh, by previous operation and I'm gonna select by selection set again. So red button selection set. And for action transform, I'm just going to, let me turn off ghost here so we can watch it happen. Again, I like to clear the hauling, and so clear all the hauling, and then just um, just do left mouse on that. And so we'll just use our hauling Omni Hall to get our gap here, like so. Kind of feel like our uh, AB button cylinder needs some more um, sides here. So I could just right click and drag sides, or just click them in like 64, okay. Much nicer, right? Again, that's why we're doing procedural, right? So we got this guy, got our thick end. Looks, looks, um, looks pretty good. So, okay, so we'll do a couple of things here with thick end. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do another assign uh, selection set, and we're going to use um, thick end select by previous operation. I just want that top polygon. I want a, a selection set there because I'm going to do a number of things. I'm going to do some chamfering. I'm going to change um, some subdivisions so I can get a little dip in there. Kind of a bunch of stuff. Um, and it's just nice to create a selection set so I know you know I'm, what I'm dealing with here. So I'm just going to get this top one here. And we'll just call this uh, red button top. Like that. Again, it's good just to go over to stats and make sure you see that. Whoops, the selection set has to be uh, set to polygon as well. And so it's easy to forget some of these things. So that's why you always, you always check it. There it is. Okay, it looks good. So I've got uh, that selection set. So I want to do a number of things. I want to you know bevel the edges a little bit or chamfer the edges. But I also want to do some subdivisions on the top so I can get this little dip, right? These buttons have this little dip in them. So that's what I'm shooting for here. So uh, let's just do a, another uh, polygon bevel. like this, and I'm gonna use that selection set we just created, sign by selection set, red button top. Okay, and then I'm going to bevel that in a little bit, let's turn on wireframe. Like so, we just get a lot of divisions here, right? Whoops, turn on channel hall and get your divisions and just get a really in like this and get you know decent number of divisions in there with with right click right because we're gonna want that sort of shape in there so we need enough subdivisions to get that shape and you don't have to well yeah we do we'll spike that middle polygon there so let's do a spike and select by previous operation and we'll get um, that latest polygon bevel in the, in the front there to spike it okay now I'm going to create a, a, a weight map, and we're going to use a weight map fall off to get that nice little bevel. Here, I really think Bodo needs a soft selection fall off. So we have a fall off that takes an input, maybe just a you know an index of a vertice or a selection set, and then has a soft radius fall off. In this case, I just use that middle spike point and then do a soft fall off from there. But that tool doesn't exist, so we have to create a weight map which is fine. So we'll just do um, set weight. Whoops, uh, hover over there, tab, set weight. And we'll just call this A. And uh, we want this to be a vertex weight map. And you can select map, which just kind of grabs it over here. That selects weight, right? And we want it to be a 100%, 100%. But we want it just on that spike button though, right? So select by previous operation. I'm sorry, spike. Um, vertice right there in the middle. Boom, that's where we want it. 
And then we're just going to slowly grow it out from there. So grow, grow weight, and we'll grow it. Um, we want map name A. Again, sometimes there's a drop down, sometimes you have to type it in. And we want this to grow out like maybe five, uh, like that one. Well, looks good. Let's do five. And then we want to smooth it. So smooth weight. And again, A is the name of the weight map we want to smooth. And we want to maybe do like an eight count there. Man, that's too much. Maybe like three just getting it towards the edges there maybe maybe four i think that's fine um and then then we'll do a push push operation so we can do a push and we want it to be we're going to do a couple things here we're going to do a um now we could just do a fall off and it, it, right now it's going to try to apply the push to to everything Ooh, right we could just use a fall off but i'm gonna narrow the selection to this top selection set just in case some of that weight map leaked over here which i can't maybe can't see and so we'll do a select by um, selection set and just red button top right so now that push is just on the red button top and we want to set it to a um yeah i think polygon push is what we want but we want a weight map fall off, and that weight map is weight map A. Hey, look at drop down, so I'm having to type it in. Weird, okay. Push, and we'll just push it in a little bit, like so. Okay, that's kind of, kind of what we want. Now I could do also a remap weight, so if I do a remap, if I can spell remap, remap weight, and drag that underneath our push, and I'm gonna remap A, right? And, and again, I was talking about this. Remap just inverts it. <laughs> just, uh, I guess that's the default idea of remapping. It shouldn't be inverted. It should just apply it. And then, you know, so I, I just, you know, change your remap value here. But then start to um, maybe even select your gear, make it taller. You can just sort of like adjust this a little bit, like a little more of a slope in so you can see what's going on here. Just adjusting those weights at the beginning, so it's a little bit flat, and then it goes in, and maybe maybe not quite that much. Like that, maybe. Okay, looks good. So let's get a little chamfer on the on the edge there, and we are good to go. So edge chamfer. We want that uh, top selection set again that we made, the red button top. And I'll just release my weight map to not see it in the viewport. And you know, then I need a, a boundary edge there. So now I'm just doing the boundary edge and turn on ghosting so you can, um, so you can see it there, right there, boundary edge. It's really hard to see. Really need to make that. Um, I really think they should use this new edge thickness option to make that you know, twice as thick. So selected uh, edges are twice as thick as regular edges. That would be super helpful in sort of determining what is and what is not selected. But there we go. There's our buttons looking nice. Okay, and the last thing I do is just do a material tag for them. So material tag and we can use our just um, select by selection set, and it's the red button selection set, right? Uh, just let's just make sure <laughs> red or red buttons. See this? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, give me a drop down. Um, there we go. And so material tag, we'll just call it red button plastic or button red plastic maybe. Typically do item, color, material type, stuff like that. It's good to have a system. Like this is the item in the, that we're in the scene, the shader tree that we're you know shading. This is um, the color we're making it. And this is the material type, plastic, metal, glass, you know, vinyl, whatever. That's uh, the way I usually like to do it. But do it your own way. My, my, own, my own system and I, I'm looking in the wrong place. Okay, so we'll make this red. And maybe a little bit shinier than normal, 15. Okay, there we go. Now we just need you know a couple more stencils and we need to deal with 
this, which is sort of the most complex shape we have because it's it's sort of concave. So here I'm going to jump out of the um, procedural realm. I'm just going to model across real quick. You can do this procedurally, but I just I'm not really sure I see the point. So I, I'll just do the base shape um, as a cross, and then we'll add some mesh operations above that. So we'll just call this slicer uh, cross button there, and then I'm just going to use, um, like I said, just Moto's direct modeling tools just to put this in here real quick. Like so, is that just is it the whole area there? Uh, now it's again, it's sort of shifted down again, nothing's centered. <laughs> like somebody at Nintendo had a problem with like centering things. So right click and drag. So we got um, some segments and then we'll just delete these guys. And then, uh, yeah, does that look about right? And make this guy a little bit smaller and closer. So I know I keep having to zoom out like crazy. Uh, that's not bad. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. So we'll just move it a little bit, sort of center it just a little bit. And again, it's a little farther to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to, is there a gap around this one? Oh, so we've got like a white plastic bevel, kind of like this, and then a gap, and then the actual cross. Okay, so we've got a couple things we gotta deal with here. So let's go, let's just start adding some mesh ops on here so we can um, you know, change it if we want to. Do a vertex bevel. Ah, interesting. So I need to do a selection operation on vertex bevel to just get those edges and not all of these. So let's do a selection operation. Oh, this will be a good practice actually, because what we need to do is we need to do operate on, on vertices that only have two edges and not vertices that have three or four edges, right? Four edges, really. So now there's no built-in selection operation to do this, I don't believe, but we can make one really easily. So let me sort of um, pop open the schematic again. And this is good practice for making your own selection operations with a selection operator. So we'll just do add, we'll do a vertex uh, selection operator. And I'm gonna drag this over here and we just sort of scooch this in a little bit turn our bevel on just to um, see it in action once we get some things operated on. So the selection operator has a number of channels that we can use for selection. One of those is edge count. So we want to drag that into the schematic. Now the best thing to do is so you don't wind up doing stuff like this is just to right click and select separate channel and you pull it off to the side. So same item, just channels and different screen space so we can just do some more sort of logical left to right hooking up here and we just need to do some logic right so basically it's going to go through all the vertices this operator an operator means it's going to look at every single vertice right and it's going to you know look and see how many edges are connected to that vertice and then it's going to output a true or false based on that so we just need some uh, logic just hit tab if you're in 16 you can just or hit add if you're not and just do logic um, A is equal to B, right? So I just uh, double click that multiple times apparently. <laughs> so don't need three of them, delete those two. Um, and so we want edge count to go into A. And so when edge count equals um, two, we want that to be true value. True value is one, which is selected. And if it does not equal two, I'll put false value, which is zero. And then when I put the output into select, this should theoretically work. Enable my vertex selection, and there we go. It's just getting those guys on the outside because they have two edges and not three. So this sort of little 
assembly we made right here. It's, it's important to know how to do that, to create your own selection assembly when one's not sort of pre-built for you. And so there's all kinds of things you could do like based on area or slope and other stuff, um, you know, just depending on how much you want to get into it. But it's, it's an important skill to have if you're doing this sort of, uh, this sort of modeling. So we'll just turn that. It's just a little bit of a bevel there, the vertex bevel, not super, super big, maybe something like this. And then, yeah, let's do a thicken and uh, move it down. So it's intersecting. And then we'll go back to our guy here. We can just hide that and we'll do a, uh, okay. Okay, new solid drill. And we want the uh, cross. Where is that cross button? Uh, I think stencil, and we're just going to use that existing white plastic material, which is white plastic. What a great name. Okay, there we go. And then let's see, that's just sort of, again, sort of, sort of like this one is just up and like an edge bevel and then going down to get a, a gap there. So it's just going to be a, a series of bevels and, and chamfers. Um, yeah, so let's just start on that. So polygon bevel, and we'll do a, a select by, we'll do a select by previous operation, because we don't want all white plastic. We just want, um, we just want the, the solid drill there. We'll just get the polygons from geometry. No, is that the wrong solid drill? Yes, we want the, with the slice, or the stencil gets a stencil polygon, so. That'll get us that, uh, and then we can just you know push it. I think we're going in a little bit, and then a little bit more maybe. And again, this is kind of where Moto falls down a bit. Um, it just seems like all of those should just be able to weld, keep going and weld all those polygons together or all those uh, vertices together. Oh, well, I guess it kind of did it. Okay. Nope, that's messed up. See? Yeah, so I don't know, like, why is it screwing up? Why is it screwing up that? Like it just doesn't work. Doesn't work. There we go. Okay, well, we'll just have to live with this because this hasn't been fixed or working right uh, ever. So we'll just have to go in like that and then do another polygon bevel. select the top polygons of that previous one. Boom, boom. I'm sorry, not the front, the sides like this, because we're gonna, um, we're gonna push it up. Turn off ghosting here. Like so. Yeah, I think so. And then let me just check. Yeah. And then we're gonna clone uh, this guy and we're going to action transform it down just a little bit. So, let's do that. So let's do add a clone. And select by previous operation. And which bubble with the last one? second to last one that guy right so clone up just like a millimeter even a half a millimeter 
And then we're going to action transform, shrink that in. But first let's do um, assign a selection set to it. We'll just call this black cross. Make sure it's set to polygon. And we'll use a previous operation on that clone. Getting a pretty good size list here now, right? So now we've got a black cross selection set on that guy. Let's do an action transform on that and use the black cross selection set. And just um, shrink it down a little bit, maybe 95, 95. That's probably way too much. 98, 98, and then bevel it up. Or thicken, let's actually, eh, let's do a bevel, a uh, polygon bevel like this, and select that, um, use that selection set uh, as well. Select by selection set, black cross. Probably make it black at some point just to see it a little better, but it's going up like this. Now here's where mm, it's gonna get a little bit um, weird for us, right? Because, so I need to get a edge chamfer along here, but I don't really like this topology. I'm gonna get some crossing edges. I wanna go in quite a bit and I, I don't have much room here. So I'm just gonna back off a little bit. I think I'm going to inset this a little more. So this guy right here. And, you know, of course we get these crossing edges, right? So, you know, if I if I click auto weld, it seems to put them together, but I've got this problem here. I noticed that if I uncheck group polygons, it seems to fix it. And so if I select that, I only have one vertice. So that seems to have fixed it. And if I turn these back on, I should be, um, in good standing here. Okay, so now I can do some chamfers a couple different ways. So I can do two, I can do, um, let's just do assign a selection set and I'm gonna just assign this top one, a polygon selection set, we'll just call this cross top. And it's a polygon, I'm gonna select by that previous bevel front there. So if I look at my stats here and I go to polygons and selection set, cross top should give me that. And I'm going to then do a couple chamfers here. I'm going to do um, edge chamfer. I'm going to select by previous operation. And again, I'm going to select that previous bevel there. But this time I want the sides. So add selection, select by under assemblies, select by edge length. I think these are hovering about eight millimeters. So edge length, again, we'll turn this to multiply. We'll just 0.0075, 0.085, maybe 0.009. Oh, actually we don't want the big ones, we want the smaller ones, which are two millimeters, so. like that. So now you can see we just got these small edges here. And make sure again, make sure it's on multiply. And then we're, we're going to chamfer those. Get some nice edges there. And because we had created that selection set right here, we could just do another edge chamfer and do the cross top selection set. Select by, uh, uh, whoops, new select by selection set, cross top, and we'll just convert that into uh, bound, uh, the edges. So, you know, this is a, a polygon selection set. We're gonna convert that from polygon to edges and you can see it right there. And then that's just going to give us another chamfer and see how much, it's just a lot nicer than if we had gone with our original, if we hadn't done this sort of um, welding here. So that, yeah, looks much better. And then let's go and let's get our circle and arrows here. So let's see what we can do. Um, I'll maybe do these in two different, I think the, I think the circle goes up and I think the arrows go down. So let's just do, we can do, um, we can do a prim slice, primitive slice for the circle and then do just a solid drill for the arrows. So let's just do primitive slice 
and remember like this is really flaky so let's just turn all axes to y both on the generator and for whatever reason there's two axes i just don't know why <laughs> that one as well turn off lazy apply anything that seems like it sort of screws it up turn off that as well and we want to turn it to a circle with a, like a radius of maybe um, I don't know three or so we'll start with five see where we're at again you have to select the primitive generator to, to see this in the viewport something along these lines maybe three for the radius and again I'm just kind of eyeballing this those little white lines are somewhat helpful Man, my chamfer really did not maintain very good. And I wonder, let me just, let me just turn this off for a second and turn off um, these two chamfers here. Like this is definitely a longer edge than this. So let's see if I could fix that a little bit. Seven hundred, almost there. Okay, there we go. About seven fifty. That just looks a lot more straight, not quite though. Yeah, this aspect of moto really needs to get better like this should be a right and it should still be right angles once it merges there okay that seems to have done it looks like you got to get like basically an exact thing there so clone it up assign a se selection set action transformer to get that gap bevel it up get another selection set do a chamfer do a chamfer and then do a primitive slice okay looking definitely looking better okay oh this is something along these lines okay there's a little primitive slice there and then yeah we'll just um do a little bevel and chamfer to get that going. So polygon bevel. And we want to select the uh, select by previous operation and that primitive slice. I'm going to grab the stencil polygons and then we're going to bevel that up just a little bit. Is primitive slice on stencil or is it on slice? Slice, okay. Turn of slice three. Okay, yep, got it. Okay. Push it up, go in a little. We're just gonna edge cham for the rest. And select by a previous, do our usual uh, select by previous and grab that polygon in the front one and add a boundary and then just press super channel hall. Get it in there. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little too tall move it down a little turn off uh ghosting there so it's it's something like that i guess and then yeah i just need to stencil in those arrows so why don't i press in for new mesh operation i'm just gonna hand model the arrows really quickly i'll do a combination of um, hand modeling and some mesh operations so just get my cube here don't need any um, segments. And just sort of get it centered. Get a couple of slices. Just to, this is set to symmetry. Go to wireframes and kind of see what I'm doing here. And then I'll control D to reset that. Get another slice here. Kind of a fat, short fat arrow, I guess. So get rid of these two. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm going to hide the grid. 
these guys will just um, join average. Actually, let's put one more slice down the middle there and then uh, join average on these guys. Oop, which I could do if they were verts. Convert the verts, whoops. Could join average. There we go. And then, yeah, these are, should be a lot fatter. It's a short, fat arrow, chunky arrow, kind of like, kind of like this, I guess. Make sure all these are uh, aligned. I can merge these as well. And then maybe just a little bit chunkier. Is that in the middle? Might... Okay. And then, uh, yeah. So, looks good. And now I'm going to do a uh, radial array. And I just want um, four all together. And I want to do replace source. And I want my helix generator to be in the middle here, like this, like so. And then, yeah, I think I just have to do a, a thicken on them. We just go to the base mesh and move it up a little bit. So there's the radial array and then a thicken. And again, the reason I'm just doing this procedure really is if, you know, these are quite right, I can just go to the, the base and uh, or the source, you know, the base mesh and just adjust one of them and and they're all going to, you know, update. So something like, like this maybe. Maybe like that, something like that, you know. Okay, looks good, I think. So I can hide my arrows, grab this guy, do a solid drill, and then grab my arrows again. And I'll just do um, a slice. And that's just slice right in there. And I'm just gonna bevel them down a little bit. Inset them down. I know we always say bevel in moto, but it's like it's an inset and a shift, and I'm gonna shift them down. And it just, you know, has lots of operations on there, so. I'm sorry, I don't want a tool pipe auto selection. Select my previous operation, and we want to select that last uh, solid drill and the intersecting edges. And we want to convert those edges um, from edges to the polygons that we need. And then polygon uh, bevel. I'm just going to omni hull that this direction just a tad. And I think any sort of edge shading can take care of the uh, chamfer there. And then I need one more material tag for black plastic on top of these guys. So we'll call it black plastic, which I think I already have in my shader tree. Um, black plastic. But then we just need to limit that operation to, I think the selection set are cross selection set. What is it? Go to stats, selection set, cross top, black cross. Yeah, black cross, that's what we want. Black cross. Boom, and yeah, there we go. Looking pretty good. Um, we just need some text. We need select start, A, B, and then Nintendo. So let's just do some text real quick. So over here, we'll just do a new um, item. We'll just call this B, A, or we'll just call it B, A, text, I guess. Or now uh, let's be smart. Slicer, B, A, text. Drag that above the arrows a little bit. Arrows called slicer arrows. Keep it neat and tidy, neat and tidy. So here we'll just do a um, text mesh operation. So it goes B and then A, hit enter. And we want it on Y and we want uh, some font like Arial, which I think they have that on Mac. Yeah, Arial maybe, I don't know. Scooch it down. These two controls will do um, the sort of the spacing and the um, positioning. Get it up a little bit here. I'm just getting these under the right area. I think it's kind of like so. There's my B, maybe a little bit smaller. It's kind of 
justified with the edge of that button and the a goes there yeah yeah okay thicken uh, actually we need to do a freeze so uh text is like a special sort of polygon um sort of a procedural polygon so you can change the text and you need to freeze it to do any sort of boolean or slicing operations you also get the world's worst freezing algorithm for free which is two billion points so let's bump this up to like 20 or even um 30 for the refinement angle to get fewer points on there. A is looking good. It's not the world's worst. It's just not. Could be better. Could be better. So we'll thicken that. And just uh, drag that down. And we're going to do. Um, we'll do a. You know. A, oh, you know, what? I'll just do a couple of these. Let's do one more. Let's do it this way. We'll do it all at once. We'll do one more. We'll call this. Um, slicer. Select start text and let me turn off my verts there. And so it's kind of the same thing, just uh, text. And we're going to say uh, all caps select start. And we want it on Y. We want it by like 0.01 or so. Oh, and we want uh, Arial. Yeah, there's a lot of fonts here. Arial Bold, maybe. Um, then I think I can just, yeah, move it up. I maybe want this center select, center justify. Oh, maybe I could just do this. I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of like right here. Sort of in the center of this. And then start is just pushed over. Oh, that's all of them. So... Maybe we'll just put some spaces in there. Start. Okay. That's eyeballing. It's okay. It'll work. That will work. Um, just move it down a little bit and get it centered a little bit there. And then again, we need to freeze it. And then we need to um, probably adjust this to 30 or so. Whoops. Uh, again, I can just isolate it and look at the verts. And, you know, if you see how fast I'm sort of, you know, doing these pie menus, it's all just muscle memory, right? So isolate, select. If you don't watch my videos, it's just this button up here. You should replace show texture locators, which is just I don't, who uses those in 2023. And with uh, isolate select, which is super useful, then verts is just down here. So you can just boom, boom, you know, very quickly isolate, you know, show verts and wireframes, stuff like that. So get used to control one if you don't use it. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. So we'll thicken it. And then, um, yeah, we'll just pull that down. And I think what I can do is, can I do a merge mesh on top of this and just merge in that BA one? Existing slicer be a text, and then uh, assume that's just gonna add everything, right? So, if I hide ba text, oh, okay, so there it is. So, I've got it all in one. So, ba is still procedural, it's just merged into this select start one. But what that allows me to do is I can just go back to this guy and let me just hide this one. I could just do a, a, a solid drill on just, just once, right? So they're both red, so I'll just do a solid drill. And I want to do um, stencil, and I want to use a uh, slicer text um, start select. And that'll get both of those in there. And then I just want the uh, button red plastic, I think it was called. And there we go. All right. Uh, last thing we just need is, well, I guess we need our cord, and we need a Nintendo right there. So I just actually downloaded a Illustrator file from the internet for the Nintendo logo, bring it into Illustrator, save it out as Illustrator version eight, <laughs> because that's what for sure will work with Moto. Everything else is a crapshoot. I'm just gonna import that right now. So here it is imported and it's, it comes in as like curves. You always have to do a little cleanup. So I'm just gonna grab these guys and delete. And then you wanna do Let's do a freeze operation just to um, so we don't have to do the command and do it multiple times. And let's say we want it to be freezes faces. 
We want the drill axis to be on Z. We want to uh, make holes. And it doesn't always do it right, right? So like the O and the E aren't quite right. We can, you know, we can uh, uh, fix it manually. You can try, just right click and say freeze on here. It'll freeze your freeze. Um, you could try like a mesh cleanup, but you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And here it doesn't. So what you have to do is just go in and manually fix that. So I just grab, basically you wanna, uh, you want at least two polygons, right? So I'm just going across the hole and I'm dragging, you know, selecting these points and then coming back down. I'm going to hit P and you'll see that that's the new polygon right there. It's just, just get one, this one. <laughs> so, you know, that is what we just created and we'll just create it one more or two more. So let's get the rest of this. Boom, boom, boom. I'll just create a couple more. And yeah, this is, um, TDS really I think Moto should just allow like SVG files as a source for boolean operations. I've always felt like we needed a um, preset like a mesh or image or illustrator or SVG loader subtool. Basically that means um, You'd be able to, and we just, uh, how many polygons I got selected here? One, that's that old, ugly one. Delete that, delete that, and grab uh, these guys and flip them. There's our E, okay, do the same to O. So basically, I, I would like a, if I'm doing a, uh, a Boolean or something, instead of having to pick an existing mesh in the scene as a source file, I should be able to, for instance, like pick a, a preset and just use that as my Boolean source. And if I ever want to change it, I just swap out the preset or I should be able to pick a um, SVG file or an Illustrator file, and if I update that file or font or whatever, and that, that should be, you know, I shouldn't have to do multiple steps. I should just be able to do it all within those single mesh op. That's what I'm sort of asking for here, but I've asked for that uh, for some time. <laughs> it just hasn't showed up. I shouldn't complain. They do a lot of um, feature requests for me, people at Foundry, so. I should not complain, but I do think it would be nice to have that. And it'd be really flexible, right? Imagine you, you can just use, like, uh, you can kit bash, um, Boolean kit bash some things. And if you want to choose a different mesh preset from your kit bash collection, you can just do that, no problem. So is that, is that all the O's? Oh, got one more. And then let's just delete that big ugly one there and um, just flip all these guys around to the right size. I can also merge these together. That's fine. Same with these, just merge them. Okay, so let's get this last little bit in place here. So I'm just gonna drag this up here, call it slicer logo. And I can kill that uh, folder there. Let's just um, yeah, get this rotated, negative 90, look at the top. It sort of sits above these guys, but in, apparently the Nintendo design language at the time is not centered anywhere. It's, everything's just kind of off-center everywhere. So something like this. Uh, actually, let me look at the... Yeah, eh. I mean, it's just kind of top justified with that. this one, maybe? Who knows? Who can tell? Something like that doesn't seem right. No, I guess it is. It's closer to the top than the bottom. Okay, fine. Fine, fine. Let's move it down and do a thicken. Um, whoops. Move it down. And I'll do a thicken mesh operation. I suppose I could just do a direct modeling as well, but it's fine. And then one last, uh, you know what I'll do is I'll just merge this into um, this guy as well. So this has this has this merge here. I'll just add another merge and I'll merge in uh, the Nintendo logo, existing uh, slicer logo, let me just, hide that guy there and yeah oh it's merged in but 
doesn't like doesn't like the E. That E, that's the one that's giving me the problem, right? Okay, so let me turn that off for now and turn this back on and uh, turn off my thicken and like find out what is going on with this E here problem. Okay. Two verts right there, so let's join average. And then, then one. Okay, yep, okay, that'll work. I merge these now, is it gonna be? Yep, okay, merge, and it's just one slice. Okay, this, this should work. So thicken it. Sometimes uh, turning on deferred mesh operations really, really, was really helpful in terms of like interactivity with tool handles. And then, yeah, I'm just going to merge that back into, let me hide it and merge it back into this guy. Just turn that back on and then hide it and see if that works. Yeah, okay, E is fixed. Yeah, so looking good. I think we just need one more, just let me hide my backdrop item. Let's just get a little quick... Um, uh, cord come out the back. So I can just control C and I can copy any polygons from the procedural mesh, which is great. And press N, control V and just scale this uh, down a little bit. This will be a profile for um, a curve extrude. And I'll just, I can just move it forward a little bit as well. I'll just call this um, curve extrude or just call it cord and put it underneath there. And we'll just also make this black plastic, which should already exist. There it is. Let's click above and let's do a new and let's do a curve here. And the curve, we'll just use a regular old uh, Moto Curve tool and just sort of draw it out. Boom, 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 all the way back to my grubby teenage hands. Let's look in the back here and see how we're doing. Just. Uh, move this up a little bit. I think that should just be right in the middle though, like y equals zero. So um, we could just center on y. And this little thing I keep popping up, it's just this context sensitive um, uh, tab right here, right here. Right. Right here, this one. <laughs> I basically made a pop-up of it. So if you see where I'm going from polygons to edges, all the tools change. It's just just some you know uh, really useful pop-over I made, which I should probably make available to people. Anyway, so let's go back to the cord and hide the curve. We'll just do a curve extrude, or yeah, curve extrude is fine. It'll ask me which curve I want to use, and I'll just use the one I just made, and that should be it. There it is. You can press C. I'll oh, just turn off my caps and then right click to get more, you know, segments there. And maybe from go to edge to polygon to get, oh, it's just brutal. Curve cage. There's just so many. Oh, I could probably, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I could reduce the number of polygons, I guess, on that center one. Let me just um, grab my curve a little bit. These aren't quite in the center there. And then the cord is maybe just a little bit thicker. No, it's not like that thick. <laughs> or the base mesh and uh, yeah, squish that bad boy down there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm missing that primitive slice. It stopped working again. I, it's a, ah, there's so many, so many bugs with primitive slice. So let me, this one we did really early, way down here, isn't working. Turn that back on. Let's see how that, okay, that fixed it. Now we got the, yeah, okay, cool. And can I, if I go back to cord, cord extrude, can I delete the original? I cannot, interesting. 
I want to delete this original, um, you know, I should actually do start at source, because that's in the middle. Okay, that's fine. Let's do that. Okay, got it. Yeah, I wish I knew what was going on with primitive slice and why it just kind of starts working, stops working. Um, we'll have to figure it out. But there's your Nintendo controller. I know that was a bit of a journey to get this. Um, and again, it's just sort of, you know, work. It, it's there's still some glaring omissions and mesh operations, but they're mostly there. We can get some pretty good stuff like this going. And it, it is like, I, I will say, like going all the way back down here to this original um, chamfer and, you know, say like adding another segment or two here is and just having it work is is you know and just flow up the whole stack and have everything still work is nice to do so there are definitely situations where even though this took a lot longer it's still you know just a couple hours um or you know maybe even an hour to you know build something like this nowadays it's, it's probably worth it